Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um, just testing. Uh, the translation is working. Yes, if you're listening to me in Russian, please raise your hand. Yes, okay, that's working. And in Turkish, if you're listening to me in Turkish, yes, that's also working. Okay, excellent. <coughs> so, uh, thank you uh, for inviting me to speak about Wikidata on this happy occasion. Thank you to the uh, staff of the Üsküdar uh, University. I was very pleased to hear in the speech of the founding uh, rector the uh, appreciation and commitment to freedom of knowledge and of information and of sharing that information. Universities generate new knowledge, but Wikipedia and the other Wikimedia projects are some of the most powerful vehicles for sharing that knowledge. Ten years ago, I visited Turkey, spoke at several universities, uh, Galatasaray here in Istanbul, Bilkent in Ankara, and Atilim. And I can tell you that the attitude from the uh, professors, the staff of those universities ten years ago, was uh, a lot less warm uh, than it is today. Uh, I, I heard different things. I heard a lot of... Uh, respectful suspicion, let's say. Um, Wikipedia was this new thing. Yes, the students were all using it, but we, serious professors, never. Um, these days, uh, things have changed. Everybody uses Wikipedia, including professors. <laughs> And, um, uh, you know, you need to use it responsibly, of course. Use it for what it's good for. It's not obviously a... a, a research tool, but just a tool, a first step on the way to knowledge. So <clears throat> anyway, I just wanted to say that I'm happy to see uh, this change in attitude in Turkey in the 10 years that I've been uh, paying attention. So um, how many of you have already heard me introduce Wikidata in some other uh, occasion? Yes, quite a few. So I, I was aware of that. But also, the sort of the other half in this room have not, and maybe haven't heard anything about Wikidata. So this will be an introduction to Wikidata from the very beginning. And I encourage those of you who have heard it before, those of you who are already contributors to Wikidata, to treat this as a workshop in how to teach Wikidata. Right? That's what you can pick up from my talk, is notice how I'm teaching Wikidata. Maybe it will help you uh, as you want to teach Wikidata in your country, in your language. Uh, of course, I'm happy to share my slides. You can translate them, etc. So, <clears throat> my name is Asaf. I work for the Wikimedia Foundation. That's the uh, American nonprofit that runs Wikipedia, that operates the servers physically, that raises the money, um, but doesn't write Wikipedia. The people in San Francisco don't write Wikipedia, not even in English. The people who write Wikipedia are you and me, volunteers, people who just want to share free knowledge. The foundation exists to make that possible, to build the platform, to pay for the platform. It costs a lot of money to run a top 10 global website. Uh, so that's who I work for, but I'm also, even before I came to work for the Wikimedia Foundation, I've been a long-time Wikipedia volunteer. I wrote on English Wikipedia, then on Hebrew Wikipedia. My tongue is Hebrew, Israel. And um, I also have some other side interests. I'm an amateur digital librarian. I founded my own digital library for Hebrew works, uh, kind of like Wikisource. For those who know it, I believe the Turkish is Viki Kainak. Yes. Believe it or not, I remember that from 2012. <laughs> um, and I'm uh, really excited about linked data, which is the technology that Wikidata was built on. And I've been teaching about Wikidata since uh, 2016 all over the world. So that's who I am and why I'm here to speak to you. <coughs> Excuse me. And before we get to Wikidata itself, 
I like to linger, I like to spend time on the why. Why does Wikidata even exist? What problems does it exist to solve? In my experience, before we understand what something is good for, we're not very interested in how to use it. Right? If someone just started teaching someone about, I don't know, a car and how to use it without telling that person first, this is something you can use to get from point A to point B quickly and cheaply, uh, the person may not be interested in learning all the details of how to operate a car. So, on this basis, I want to discuss four problems, four key problems that Wikidata solves. The first problem is familiar to those of you who are active on Wikipedia, and that is that data on Wikipedia becomes dated, meaning out of date, meaning no longer correct. For instance, um, the, um, art an article in, let's say, French about a small town in Turkey might mention the town's population, might even mention the town's mayor. And someone wrote it in French at some point in time. Years go by, there is a new census of population in Turkey, uh, the politics of the town change, the mayor changes. What is the likelihood that the French article be up to date? Think about that. The likelihood is very low, right? Because someone who speaks French would have to notice that the mayor changed in that small town, and that almost doesn't happen. Uh, and, and vice versa, right? I mean, articles on Turkish Wikipedia about some place in, I don't know, Bolivia are also really hard to keep up to date. You have to know that th something has changed. So it's, the problem is not just that things become out of date, it's that they silently become out of date. You don't realize that something you wrote that was correct at the time is now no longer correct. You know, the, the city in Bolivia doesn't send us an email saying, hello, uh, we changed our mayor. Nobody ever sent me any such email, right, about things I wrote about. So you don't get updates. The data just silently becomes incorrect. That's a huge problem. And the more obscure the topic is, the, more, the farther it is from the language and culture of a particular Wikipedia, or the Turkish Wikipedia, the French Wikipedia, the more likely it is that the knowledge becomes out of date. So that's a big problem. And also, even if we were to get such an email or to somehow hear that there's a new uh, population census in Turkey, for example, and all of a sudden we have new population figures for hundreds or thousands of human settlements that we need to update. Think about it. Every single Wikipedia now has thousands of updates to make for the same numbers about the same places in Turkey. Again and again, volunteers would have to do it in Finnish, in Swedish, in Polish, in Arabic, right? So it's a lot of repetitive work as well. So that's the first key problem, is that data is hard to maintain, to keep up to date, especially globally, on a global scale. The second problem, and that's a problem that maybe you haven't felt in your life yet, is that we don't have flexible ways of creating lateral queries, lateral meaning cross-cutting queries about knowledge. For example, if I want to find out who won the Nobel Prize in Physics, throughout the years, that's easy, right? I go to the Wikipedia article about the Nobel Prize in Physics, and there is a list. If I want to find out who are some Turkish poets, I don't know many Turkish poets, but I know how to find out. I go to Wikipedia, I go to a category. Does everybody know about categories on Wikipedia? At the bottom of a page, we have categories. So if you can think of even one Turkish poet, you can go to the bottom of the page, click the category Turkish poets, and you will see suddenly, laterally, right to the sides, you will suddenly see other Turkish poets on Wikipedia. That's easy enough. But what if I want to know how many Nobel Prize winners were born in the year 1894? Suppose I'm interested in that. Is there an easy way to get an answer to that question? 
there isn't, right? I would have to get a list of all Nobel Prize winners and then look them up one by one when they were born and check whether they were maybe born in 1894. There's no easy way to get that answer because there is no such category on Wikipedia, Nobel Prize winners who also happen to be born in 1894, right? Um, what if I want to know who are some um, 19th century Turkish authors who wrote in French or Arabic? Do you see my point? Combining more than one criterion arbitrarily. So I invent some two things I want to cross, to, to intersect. And there's no easy way to do that. By the way, even if you go to the university librarian here, and ask them this question, they also don't have an easy way of getting you that answer. I mean, they could give you a book about Turkish authors or a book about Arabic literature in Turkey, you know, and you can start looking through the book. There's no easy way to get that answer within two minutes. Now, maybe you are telling yourself now, um, yeah, that's probably difficult, but when do I ever ask such questions? When would you ever need such things? Like, uh, I don't know, what are the ten tallest buildings in Bulgaria? You know, these are questions that I'm inventing now, but um, maybe you never ask yourself such questions. I want to suggest to you that if you feel you never ask yourself some questions, it's because you know that these are difficult questions that cannot reasonably be answered, so you don't ask them. Right? Just like you don't feel you have to uh, uh, be on Jupiter, the planet, because you know there's no practical way for you to be on Jupiter, so you don't feel a need to be on Jupiter. You know? you, we live our lives without feeling we need to be on Jupiter. But suppose we could, suppose there was an easy way we could take an afternoon visit to Jupiter, Many of us would, right? If, if it were safe, you know, many of us would like to do that. So my point is, when there is a possibility, suddenly it opens a new horizon for questions that we could be asking. We just aren't right now because we know, well, how can you ask such a question? There's no easy way to answer that. But what if there is? So that's the second key problem. The third key problem is that a piece of data is somewhat useful, like knowing <coughs> that the capital um, of uh, Germany is Berlin, that's a piece of data. But it is much more useful when it is described by data itself. Because, for example, was it always the case that Berlin was the capital of Germany. Most of you aren't old enough to remember this, but it, in my lifetime, the capital of Germany was Bonn, West Germany. And East Germany was Berlin. I mean, it wasn't even the same country. So data changes, as we've already discussed. If we want to just say the capital of Germany is Berlin, so yes, is implies today, right now, that's correct. But if my context is, in fact, in the past, if I'm asking, what was the capital of Germany in 1770? Well, that depends, right? So data can be qualified, can have limitations or constraints, qualifiers, uh, that describe the piece of data more accurately. For example, um, is it correct to say that the President of the United States is Barack Obama? No, he is no longer the President of the United States. But at one point in time, it was correct to say Barack Obama is the President of the United States. What point in time? We know the points in time, right? So 2012 to 2020, I mean, we, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 16, to 2008 to 2016, yes. Um, and we can specify that, right? And with that specification, the statement Barack Obama is the President of the United States becomes more accurate. Between those points, it was correct that the President was the Barack Obama. And after those points, it's someone else. Before those points, it's someone else. That's what I mean by data about data. 
right? Data describing a single piece of data, like who is the president, describing it with from time to time, um, according to whom some things are controversial, right? And you might say, well, it's A according to source X, but it's B according to source Y. It's controversial. There are two thoughts or opinions, each of them with a source. That's what I mean by data describing data. And that's also tricky to achieve. <clears throat> and the final thing is, in our day, in a very digital age, we have a lot of different sources of data. For example, if we want to get material about, um, let's say, uh, I don't know, William Shakespeare, we have lots of sources for it. We have material about William Shakespeare at the Turkish National Library, and also at the British Library, and also at the Library of Congress, and also at the British Museum, and also at some museum in Stratford, his hometown, and, you know, hundreds of other places on the Internet have material, some material, about Shakespeare, right? Now, if we wanted to, let's assume that I spoke many languages and I could benefit from all this different knowledge, and I want to somehow collect all that knowledge, or at least be aware that such knowledge exists in French and in Russian and in Arabic and in other languages, to just even know what is available about Shakespeare in Arabic is hard. It's hard to do. And if we had a way to correlate all these different data sources and recognize that this item number 34 here and this item number 120 there are about the same thing, William Shakespeare. If I had a way of linking these very different databases in different countries and different languages, but linking them by their shared topic, how much easier would my life as a researcher become? So these are four big problems. And amazingly, they have one solution. And that solution is an editable central storage for structured and linked data on a wiki under a free license, which is a lot of words to say Wikidata. That is what Wikidata is. <clears throat> structured data, the fact that the data is structured makes it machine understandable, makes it easy for machines to do things with this data. Because it is structured, it allows us to have the machines work for us. Um, the, the fact that the data is structured allows us to give each datum, each piece of data, its own data. Remember, we want to describe data with other data. We can have about a specific saying about, for example, someone's birth date. We can have references, citations that show how do we know this is this person's birthday. We can have qualifiers, like saying um, it is approximate. Some people's exact birth date just isn't known. And we have to somehow express that. Uh, by the way, all of you probably know older computer systems that didn't have a way of modeling doubt that required you to put in a date would put in something like, oh, uh, January 1st, you know, like some default. If you look at a lot of databases, there's a, there's a statistical discrepancy in how many people are born on January 1st, like an unlikely number of people. And most of them, of course, were not born on January 1st. It was just something that you had to feed the computer, otherwise you couldn't move on. So on Wikidata, we want to be able to express the fact we just don't know. It's not January 1st, it's an unknown day, right? We know the year, we don't know the day. So that's what structured data means. And the fact that the data is linked is what enables us to leap, to jump from item to item, to correlate pieces of data, to be able to reason through the data, to have a machine collect uh, um, and and simulate intelligence, not, not artificial intelligence, just do smart things with the data because it is linked, through those links, because the links 
capture meaning, things that are meaningful to us humans. The links we make between the data allow the machine to give us useful results. And I will demonstrate all this. I know it sounds a little abstract right now. But the fact that the data is linked <clears throat> allows us to ask questions like, I don't know, uh, who are some rock musicians whose father was also a rock musician? Again, that's a kind of question you cannot ask the librarian here at the university. They have no reasonable way to answer that question. But you can ask Wikidata. The fact that it's a central storage of structured and linked data means that when you update the population of some town in Turkey, that's the first and only time it would have to be updated until the next census. Because one person updating the data in, from Turkey, let's say, because they speak Turkish, they know about the census, will allow the Spanish Wikipedia, read in, say, Bolivia, to benefit from the updated piece of data. It won't require the Spanish Wikipedians to also know about the Turkish census and to feed in this data again. That's the benefit of centralizing the data. <coughs> The fact that it's on a wiki, and for those who may not know, a wiki is an editable website. That's it. That's the definition of wiki. A wiki is a website, unlike most websites, it's a website that you can edit. If you go to your bank's website, or to the university's website, or to the government's website, you cannot edit it. You cannot just click and change something there. But on Wikipedia you can, and not only on Wikipedia. There are other kinds of wiki sites that are not related to us, to Wikipedia, that are wikis, in the sense that they have an edit button that allows you to make an edit and save. That's a wiki. Now, the fact that Wikidata is also a wiki means you can edit the data. But also, you have all the other features that we Wikipedians are used to. You have discussion pages, so that if we disagree about something, we can discuss it on the wiki. We have an inbuilt discussion platform. We have a history page that allows us to see all the changes made to a page and to undo mistakes or vandalism, like deliberate uh, uh, harm to the wiki. And we have all the other tools that we would expect from a wiki. And finally, all of this is available under a free license, meaning legally, it is free to use. The specific license is called CC0, like zero rights reserved. All the rights are passed to you, to the public. Anyone can do anything they want with data from Wikidata. It's as simple as that. You don't have to ask permission. You don't even have to give credit. Could be nice, you know, to say that you got the data from Wikidata, but you don't have to. You, you literally can use it for any purpose, commercial purposes, etc. That's what it means, a CC0 license. So all of us, when we contribute data to Wikidata, we don't get to retain control over it. We release the data into the general sea of data in Wikidata. Quick pause. Is my English clear enough? Is the translation clear enough? Are you following me? Yes? Nod if you are following me? Yes? Okay, cool. Thank you. So, in short, Wikidata is love. Wikidata is a labor of love. We all contribute. All of us do our little part. And everybody around the world can benefit. And I hope by the end of this talk and by the end of this conference, you will agree that Wikidata is love. So, let's zoom in a bit. I mentioned structured data. What is structured data? And at the heart of the structure of the data on Wikidata is this little equation, what's called a claim. In English, it's called a claim. And a claim is basically this three-part um, structure that says that a certain item, that's the term for a unit in Wikidata, an item is a topic, is anything you might want to describe on Wikidata. It can be a person, it can be a place, it can be a concept, it can be a book, it can be um, um, yeah, a river, whatever. Um, 
So an item is something that I want to describe. And then the item has many properties. Again, these are the English terms. Properties. Um, and each property has a value or even more than one value. So we have something we want to describe, and we describe it through a set, more than one, a set of properties, each of them having some value. So the property is a specific kind of data that's relevant to this item. For example, if we're describing a mountain, we may be interested to describe its height. Right? That's a relevant property for a mountain. Now, people also have heights, right? All of us have a height. But we usually don't describe people according to their height, right? I mean, unless they're basketball players or something, right? Then it's relevant. Or unless it's Hakan, because it's difficult not to notice how tall he is, right? But, but how, exactly how tall he is it doesn't really matter, right? It doesn't matter to how good of a teacher he is or how good of a technical person he is, right? We, it's just irrelevant. How high I am is just irrelevant to what I do, to what I'm teaching you. So nobody cares. It's not an interesting data datum about humans, even though it, it exists. It's available. You could describe me with my height. There would just be no point to it. But about mountains... We care. We care how high they are. Right? So different properties are relevant to different kinds of items. Um, if it's a country, we care about the capital of the, of the country, what currency they use, etc. Um, now the value in this equation is the actual uh, uh, content of that property. So what is the height of the mountain? What is the capital of the country? Right? And the value can either be a link to another Wikidata item, or it can be an actual number. So, for example, the number 8,848 meters, that's the height of what? Everest. Mount Everest, correct. Okay, so another way to look at it is uh, through the metaphor of a form. Like, imagine a form that you have to fill for the university or for the government or something, right? Like a form. The whole form is about you. So you are the item. You are the subject of the whole form. But in the form, you have fields, like name, address, telephone number. And then you have lines to fill in the value, right? The field name is like the property. And what you fill in the field is like the value. Does that metaphor make sense to you? So you can imagine Wikidata items as like uh, forms, long forms, or like a folder, a file about some topic. And inside the folder is just a set of these field names and the values of the fields, right? What do we know about this person? We know this is this, this is this, etc. I'm going to pause here. And I'm going to look for nods. Is this clear, this metaphor? Do you understand? Yes? Some of you are a little sleepy. <clears throat> so again, an item about a country, what kinds of properties might it have? We would have population, and land area, and official languages, and borders, and the anthem, and demonyms, like what do you call the people who live there, uh, gross domestic product. And you, you can think of many, many different kinds of things that we want to know about a country. But if I'm describing a person, pers people don't have anthems, right? Most of us, at least, don't, don't have an anthem, right? And we don't have a currency. I mean, we use all kinds of currencies, depending on where we are. So we have different things that are relevant to us. We have a birthday. We, some, not, not us, but other people who have already died have a death date. Um, uh, place of birth, citizenship, languages spoken, religion, uh, father, mother, place of education. All kinds of things that we can use to describe people. Again, a mountain doesn't have a place of education, right? Mountains don't get education. Uh, mountains also don't have children or birth dates, right? They might have age, you know, kind of in millions of years, but they don't have a birth date. It, it's meaningless to talk about a birth date of a mountain or languages spoken of a river, so we understand different items have different properties. Okay, so here are some concrete examples of claims. Each line here is one claim. So 
We see here the Earth is our item, the topic. What we want to talk about is planet Earth. And we say about it that its highest point, that's the property, the highest point on Earth is what? Mount Everest. Okay? Mount Everest here in this claim is the value, the value of the property highest place. But it's also a link to the item about Mount Everest. Again, here in this first line, I am saying something about the Earth. I'm describing Earth by saying that its highest point is Mount Everest. But I'm linking to Mount Everest. And in the next line, now Mount Everest is the topic. This statement is describing something not about Earth, but about Mount Everest. And we say that the elevation above sea level of Mount Everest is 8,848 meters. Now, we couldn't say this about the Earth, right? It doesn't make sense to say Earth, elevation above sea level. It, it's meaningless, right? The Earth has all kinds of elevations. You cannot talk about the Earth's elevation above sea level. It's, it's nonsensical. So that also shows us the importance of placing the datum, placing the claim on the right item. And you can see that these two lines together tell us something. The first line answers the question, where? Where on earth is the highest point? Not how high it is, where? And the answer is, there, Mount Everest. Now about Mount Everest, we say, how high is it? It's 8,000, etc. Right? Now, we want to say something else about the earth. We want to say that the deepest point in the Earth is the Challenger Deep in the Pacific Ocean. And that's, again, a question about where. And then we describe the Challenger Deep. The Challenger Deep has elevation above sea level of minus 10,900 meters, right? It's 11 kilometers below sea level. So you see... The first and third line are the same kind. They are describing the Earth with two different properties. right? And the second and fourth line are also alike because they're describing two different items with the same property. You notice? The same property of elevation above sea level. Pause. Was this clear, these examples? Are you with me still? Yes? Okay. Here's another way of looking at it. We might say, we want to talk about the earth. And about the earth, we want to say two things. The highest point is Mount Everest. The deepest point is Challenger Deep. In this case, this is the item. These here are properties. And these our values, right? So we can think about it again like a folder or a form that has a title, the earth, and then a series of fields about it. Highest point, lowest point, total mass, etc. And then we have a different card or a different folder. This one is about the Challenger Deep. And it says this property has this value, etc. Right? This is just another way of looking at the same four statements or claims. Now let's do it one more time, this time with numeric IDs. So it's the same four claims, but each part of the claim has a numerical ID. So when we talk about the Earth, in Wikidata terms, we're talking about Q2. When we talk about Mount Everest, we talk about Q513. These are arbitrary numbers, but they're constant. So everywhere we talk about Mount Everest on Wikidata, it will be Q513. That's the permanent ID of Mount Everest. Now, the properties, as you can see, have a different um, marker. It starts with P. P for property. Property 610. And whenever we say 
uh, that property, we will always use P610. You can see that the elevation above sea level has P2044, and the next time we say it, it is again P2044. Right? So things have permanent IDs. And I'll tell you a secret. For Wikidata, in the database, Wikidata doesn't need our squishy human-speak labels. So actually, the data looks like this. Right? The data in the database is that Q2 has property 610 with value Q513. Now that's hard to read, right, for us, because we are squishy humans. So we prefer this form, right, where you can actually see what you're talking about. Okay, just remember that for the computer, this is the data. <clears throat> now, why do we use numbers? Why do we label these things on Wikidata with numbers? Well, because labels are both ambiguous and sometimes redundant. I'll give you an example. What is London? When I say London, you're probably thinking about a city in the United Kingdom. But it is just as much the name of some small town in Canada. It is also the uh, personal name of some people. There are people living whose first name is London. There are people living whose last name is London, like Jack London, the author, right? That's also London. And uh, there's a movie company called London Productions. And I ate at a chicken restaurant in Hong Kong called London. That's also London. So... Yeah, yeah, code name, yeah. So, uh, London is not a sufficiently specific label, even in English. All these examples were from English. Not to mention that in other languages, London is not necessarily London, right? In French, it's Londres. It's not London. It's a different word. Related, yes, but it's not London. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Istanbul is not called Istanbul in all languages, right? Some of them have versions of Constantinople still, right? Um, et cetera, et cetera. So, language, so, so we humans can't agree on what to call certain things. We have different names in different languages in different periods. So instead of having to fight, do we call Istanbul Istanbul? Or do we call it, you know, what the Germans call it or what other, you know, other countries call it? Let's not fight. Let's just have a number. We can all agree on numbers. And the number doesn't mean anything. It's just whatever number was next available on Wikidata. And then we humans, different humans, can continue to call Istanbul in the name in our language as long as that name maps to the same arbitrary number. And that's very powerful. It allows us, we speak different languages, it allows us to collaborate. The person in Bolivia who wants the population numbers doesn't need to know what you call population in Turkish. As long as he knows, oh, it's property 1215, that's all they need to know. And then they call it population in Spanish, you call it population in Turkish, but as long as it's P1215, we're good. Okay, that's the power of these numbers. And of course, the numbers are also easier for the machine. So, we are about ready to go explore Wikidata, actually look at Wikidata. But before that, I want to make sure there are no questions. Everybody has followed me. Any questions? We can take questions. Yes. Do we have a microphone? or Yeah. I'll repeat the question. Why it's Q, not for example ah, A or B? Excellent question. Excellent question. So I said P for property, right? And Q is for item. Wait. 
<laughs> item doesn't start with a Q. Why do items on Wikidata start with a Q? It's actually a beautiful story. A long, long time ago, <laughs> in 2011, there was a major international Wikimedia conference called Wikimania, and it was held in Haifa in Israel. And to that conference came Wikimedians from all over the world. One Wikimedian was a Croatian living in Germany uh, named Deni Vrandecic. And another was um, a, nice a nice lady from Uzbekistan uh, who was called Kamarniso. And she was an administrator on the Uzbek Wikipedia. Still is, yes. Um, and uh, these two people who did not know each other met during the conference in Haifa and they liked each other. Uh, long story short, they have two children. <laughs> and um, Kamarniso starts with a Q. Deni Vrandecic invented Wikidata. So, yeah, so he named the Wikidata items after his lovely wife. Thank you for the excellent spontaneous question. <laughs> Any other questions? No? Okay. So, let's, uh, let's go and explore Wikidata. Let's look at actual Wikidata. Uh, here. This is Wikidata. I'm trying to... It's a little out of focus. Uh, is there anything we can do about that? Anyway, so this is an example I just picked this morning. I wanted to pick an example that most people will at least have heard of. Nazim Hikmet. Right? A fairly famous Turkish poet. At least he's, he's famous uh, around the world. Maybe there are more famous Turkish poets uh, nowadays, but uh, there was a time when he was fairly well known uh, around the world. And let's see, what does Wikidata know about Nazim Hikmet? So the first thing we see is the title. Okay, Nazim Hikmet, yes. The second thing we see is the Q number. I'm going to enlarge it even more for a bit. Okay, do you see this? Q184906. This is the Q number for Nazim Hikmet forever. Every time, everything that discusses or mentions or links to Hikmet on Wikidata will always reference this number. Okay, next. We know... We have this little description line. Turkish communist poet, playwright, and novelist with his years. We also have the way to spell his name um, uh, or some, some other ways of spelling his name. You can see that this one just uh, leaves out this special character and is an alias of his name to help people find this. Some people will not type the, you know, the special A, and we want them to still find this uh, item, so we also have this kind of alias uh, for people who cannot type uh, the right vowels. Also this, right? This is Nazim, right? Not I, right? But uh, again, most uh, non-Turkish speakers don't notice it, and they say, oh, it's an I, I'll click an I, you know? Uh, so that's why we have here this incorrect way, right? This is incorrect, Nazim with an I, but it's very practical because a lot of people, English speakers, for example, will type this. They, they don't know how to type the I without the dot, right? So you can already see that Wikidata is love. Wikidata loves you and wants you to succeed. Even if you cannot type Turkish letters, it wants you to be able to find Nazim Hikmet. Okay? Okay. Now, we also have other languages for the same thing. The name, which in Wikidata we call a label. The description, 
and the also known as. You can see here, this was the English, which we already saw up here because I'm using Wikidata in English. But you can see below something that you cannot read, right? This. And this is Hebrew, my language. That's why it's showing. It may not be showing for you because you don't have Hebrew configured, but it shows it to me. And I can read in Hebrew his name, and I can read in the Hebrew description that he is a Turkish poet. By the way, you notice it's not a translation of the English. Just like a Wikipedia article in one language is not a translation of the other. We all get to describe and put in whatever we think is necessary. And for example, the Hebrew did not think it was necessary to specify that he was a communist poet right here in the description. Right? It's a matter of uh, opinion. Uh, and we also have the Arabic script and we have Russian. That's it? Only four languages? No. These are just the languages I chose to show right now, but actually Wikidata knows what to call Nazim Hikmet in a lot of languages. I mean a lot of languages. How much time do we have? Um, okay, so <clears throat> this is useful. So Wikidata, we already see, knows how to have a number for a topic and then let people access it using their language, their script. Maybe they don't even know how to type uh, Latin script. They can use their own script, whether it's Chinese or Arabic or whatever. Okay, this was just about what to call this person, right? Um, now, we also had that description. Why is the description important? Maybe not so important in the case of Nazim Hikmet, but if we have someone called John Smith, it's really difficult to make sure we have reached the right John Smith. Because there is the John Smith who founded uh, Mormonism in the United States, but there's also John Smith, a British judge, and there's John Smith, a football player. There's more than one John Smith, a football player, right? We, we have a lot of people called John Smith on Wikidata. Now, what do we do on Wikipedia when we have more than one thing with the same name? That's right. We use parentheses, right? We say, John Smith, parentheses, British judge. To disambiguate, to separate it from John Smith, American uh, Mormon, or whatever, right? It, it works, but I want to suggest to you that that was a crutch. That was a, 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 a band-aid not a real solution, because the name of the person was John Smith, not John Smith, British judge, right? The, the correct way, the, the, we would like to be able to just say, this is John Smith, but we can't on Wikipedia, because Wikipedia can only have one page with the same name. So this is another benefit of the fact that Wikidata uses numbers. As long as the numbers are different, you can have a hundred items called John Smith because the numbers are different. But still, how would you tell them apart? How would you know which is the correct number for the John Smith that you want to read about or to write about? That is why we have the description line. Okay? That is the only function, the only thing this description line needs to do is to help us tell this apart from some other possible Nazim Hikmet. I don't know how common that name is. Maybe there's no other famous Nazim Hikmet, but maybe there is a football player named Nazim Hikmet. Maybe there's, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, a member of parliament that's named that. So we need to be able to tell them apart. Now, you can see that on the Hebrew Wikipedia, uh, we decided that Turkish poet is enough to disambiguate, because at least to the Hebrew uh, world, we don't know of any other Nazim Hikmet. So as long as we say it's a Turkish poet, not to be confused, I don't know, with maybe some uh, Azeri football player, we just say, yeah, we mean the Turkish poet, that one, that's it, that's enough. Now if there were uh, three Turkish poets, all named Nazim Hikmet, one famous one and two less famous ones, we would have to say something more. We would have to say, you know, 19th century Turkish poet, or, I don't know, Turkish poet from wherever. 
Okay, so that's the description line, but I'm stressing this because I want you to resist the urge to write a mini biography in the description line. Okay, don't feel, oh, we have to mention that he was also a painter and that he won the Nobel Prize or something. You don't have to mention anything. You have to say the minimum necessary to disambiguate this thing. That's it. Because everything else will come later. So keep the descriptions short, actually. So in that sense, this is not a great description. It's too long. Okay, so we understand this box now with all the names and descriptions. Let's move on to the actual structured data. You see here, statements. Statements are composed of claims. So here's the first claim, the first structured data claim we see. And the first claim about Nazim Hikmet is that he is an instance of, that's the property, human. Instance of human. An instance, like an exemplar, right? He's, he's a, 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 spe- a private case of the class human. Well, of course he's human, right? Of course he's human. We all know that. But remember, Wikidata doesn't only describe people. It also describes mountains and poems and religious concepts and books. So, first of all, it's helpful to say, this item is a person. It's not a river, it's not a mountain, it's a person, it's a human. So it's a trivial piece of information, it's obvious to us, but still it's helpful to tell the computer... If I'm asking you about mountains one day, don't include this item. It's not a mountain. If I'm asking you about people, do include this item. It's a person. Okay? So it's a trivial piece of information, but it's important to have. Next. The next property we have is called image. By the way, if you hover over it, you can see the P number. P18 in this case. But we don't have to remember these numbers. We can use our human language and Wikidata translates it into numbers. So here we have an image of Nazim Hikmet. And again, on commons, on Wikimedia commons, maybe we have lots of pictures of him. We don't need to add all of them here. Again, the idea is to have something that's useful for a computer. So one representative image is enough. The rest can be accessed on commons. Onwards, what else do we know about him in Wikidata? Well, we know sex or gender, male. Okay, again, obvious to us maybe, but still, we document this tiny piece of information. Every piece of information on Wikidata that we put in a structured way like this helps us later when we want to query Wikidata, which we will learn to do tomorrow helps us query Wikidata, helps us retrieve information. For example, thanks to this field, I'm able to ask questions like, who are some male Turkish poets and not get female Turkish poets, or vice versa. I'm only interested in female Turkish poets, and I don't want to receive Nazim Hikmet when I'm interested in female Turkish poets. This one piece of data is what enables that. Next. Country of citizenship. This is interesting. So the property, the one property, country of citizenship, has more than one value. And that is because Hikmet had more than one citizenship at different points of his life. Right? He was a citizen of the Ottoman Empire, but later of Turkey. Not exactly the same thing, right? And he also, apparently, was a citizen of Poland. I didn't know that, but Wikidata does. Next, what is his name in his native language? So we have here the Turkish form of his name. Um, And uh, yeah, this is another thing I didn't know. His family name is actually Ran. I never heard that. I've only ever heard him called Nazim Hikmet. But apparently he had a full name and the family name is Ran. Is that correct? Yes? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So all over the world, he's known by his uh, given names, not by his uh, surname. Now I learn. He also had a pseudonym, a literary pseudonym, Orhan Selim. And Wikidata knows that. And it knows his date of birth. By the way, how does it know his date of birth, 15 January 1902? 
So some claims, you can see, have references, citations, that show, if we click this, we see why Wikidata thinks he was born January 15, 1902. And we can see that, for one, eh, because English Wikipedia says so, that's not a good reference, right? <laughs> Wikipedia, seriously, Wikipedia is not a reliable source. We, Wikipedians, think that Wikipedia is not a reliable source. Okay? Wikipedia needs to rely on reliable sources. So that's just a technical thing. In the early days of Wikidata, we imported a lot of data from English Wikipedia. So this just means, well, we copied the date from English Wikipedia. It's not actually a source. But this is a source. The date of birth is stated in the Gemeinsame Normdatei, which is a German uh, data bank. Uh, maintained by librarians. So that is a somewhat of, of, uh, uh, good authority on dates of birth. And it is also stated in Filmportal in Germany. And it is also stated in the Fine Art Archive. So we have at least three sources that are more serious, more institutional, that do know his date of birth. And we can add uh, references of our own. We know he was born in Thessaloniki. And we even have this little sub-property here. You see this? Under the value, we have a, what's called a qualifier. Remember I said we describe data with data? So the piece of data here is that he was born in Thessaloniki. But specifically, he was born in Thessaloniki, which then was part of the Ottoman Empire. Right? It contextualizes his having been born in Thessaloniki. A naive person who you know, is, is like a young person today might go, oh, he was born in Greece? Well, no. I mean, physically, maybe, but you know, he was born in the Ottoman Empire, in Thessaloniki of the Ottoman Empire. Do you see? <clears throat> there is a meaning to this context. Uh, date of death, place of death, he died in Moscow. Manner of death. Wikidata even knows how he died. He was not run over by a bus. He died of natural causes. And the natural cause in question was a myocardial infarction, which is a fancy way of saying he had a heart attack. Okay. What? And the flag. What? Sorry? The flag. Oh, the flag. Excellent question. This little flag here that you see on some of these we can click it and find out. It says, this uh, needs a citation because it's a sensitive piece of data. M manner of death, you know. If you want to assert that someone died, I don't know, from a drug overdose or from being murdered or, or, or from natural causes, you should have a source for it. Whereas if you want to say that he spoke Turkish... Um, that's not a sensitive piece of information. I mean, ideally we should have a citation for that as well. But, you know, that's kind of not controversial. And even if it's wrong, if I assert that he spoke, I don't know, Hebrew, which he did not speak, uh, it would be incorrect information, but it's not like embarrassing or, or se sensitive maybe, you know. But a, an incorrect manner of death... That's a little more sensitive. And in this case, this is uh, not very good data because someone did add that he died of natural causes but didn't offer a source. So that's why this flag is basically drawing your attention. Hey, this really should have a source. And ideally, if you, for example, can find newspaper coverage or something like that that states that he died of a heart attack, you can add that piece of uh, uh, evidence like this. You can click Add Reference and then just paste here the reference URL, you know, and just paste here the URL to the piece of information that you found. So, and that would be good, and that you, be, you would be contributing to Wikidata. So thank you for asking about the little flags. Okay, he was born in, Mo he was uh, buried, sorry, in Moscow. His mother was this person. His spouse was this person. Uh, he has relatives that Wikidata knows about. His native language was Turkish, but he also spoke Russian. Uh, uh, he wrote in Turkish. That's the language he wrote in, right? That's not always obvious, right? Joseph Conrad, the author, his native language was Polish, but he wrote in English. <clears throat> 
Then we have occupation. What did this person do? Well, multiple values. He was a playwright and a poet and a writer and a screenwriter and an author and a prosaist. Where was he educated? Wikidata knows quite a lot about this person. He was educated in Galatasaray High School, the Naval High School, uh, uh, the Communist University of the Toilets of the East, etc., uh, etc. Et and ethnically, he's a Turk. As we know, not everybody born in the Ottoman Empire was ethnically a Turk. So it's somewhat relevant to point out. Um, what was his religion or world view? Again, a- we say atheism here on Wikidata, but we have <clears throat> another little flag here that's an s- exclamation point. You really shouldn't be asserting things about people's religion without a source. Now, we know he was a communist, so atheism makes sense, but still... I agree with this, that we shouldn't be asserting things about religion without a source, so much so that I'm going to remove it right now. That's it. As of right now, Wikidata no longer says he's an atheist, and I invite you to find a reference and then add it back. Yes. Yeah, so this is a more technical note. Uh, We say he's a Turk. There is a reference, but the reference is a poor one. Again, it was just copied from English Wikipedia. So that's not a good, you know, not a good reference. So someone added this um, low rank here. You see this little triangle here? It means we're not so sure about this particular piece of data. And the reason we're not sure is that it was just just copied from English Wikipedia. So it's as good as no source, really. Um, Okay, moving on before the break, we just want to finish this little tour. We have a picture of his signature. Wikidata knows what his signature looked like. So admit it, there are some pieces of data here you didn't expect to find. You know, you were probably expected to know his date of birth, place of birth, etc. But a picture of his signature? That's already pretty detailed and surprising. We even have a pronunciation audio of how his name is pronounced. Maybe not all of you could hear it from my laptop, but we have an audio file that tells us what his name sounds like and in what language it is. And in some names and for some uh, speakers, it's really helpful to to be able to hear the name. Hmm? Oh, I can click it again, yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess most people in this room know how to pronounce his name. Anyway, moving on, there's uh, a few more things. The last thing I want to show you before the break is this. So there were also all, all kinds of other statements there, but this, this is where the magical keys live. It's called identifiers, but I call them magical keys. Because each of these properties and values gives you a magical key into another database. Remember I told you we want to link all the different databases that have material about Nazim Hikmet in one place? That one place is Wikidata. Wikidata gives you those links to other databases with information. For example, the Vatican Library. Okay? In the Vatican Library, under this number, there is information about Nazim Hikmet, and I can click it and be taken right through to the Vatican Library. This is the site of the Vatican Library, where I can see their information card about Hikmet. And it's not a lot of information, but it has some... uh, Yeah, it has some technical information for librarians, for the Vatican Library. So in this case, I didn't learn much new, but still, I didn't have to go to the Vatican Library and figure out how to search in their interface and, you know, uh, imagine this was John Smith, how to find the right John Smith. I was just given a direct link into a database I didn't know about, and in that sense... It is something of a magic key. We have lots and lots of keys here for Hikmet, the National Library of Spain, the National Library of France, of Germany, um, National Library of Greece, of Israel, of Korea. Again, you know, most of us don't speak Korean. It might be difficult to find our hands and feet in the National Library of Korea database, but we got a special key 
that led us there. And this is the National Library of Korea's information about Nazim Hikmet. Okay, so these are magical keys, and many people don't know about them, but now you do. Finally, I'm sorry I'm stealing one minute from the break. Finally, after all of these IDs, by the way, it even includes IMDB, the movie database. You know, not just uh, national libraries. Any external database that might be relevant can be listed here. But after all of that, including some Turkish uh, sites, like the Islam Encyclopedia, for example, um, after all of that, we have the site links. And these are links to the various Wikimedia projects about Hikmet. Right? So we have all the Wikipedia articles about Hikmet in the various languages, lots and lots of Wikipedia articles. We also have wiki quote pages with quotations from Hikmet in 11 languages. They're all linked from here. And of course we have a commons page for Nazim Hikmet. So this concludes our little tour of just one item in Wikidata. And now we'll take a break and have the second part. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed the break. And I hope you've enjoyed our little tour of Wikidata. Uh, the translation is working again, yes? Everybody can follow me? Yes, okay. So um, I'd like to take a few questions about what you have seen. The item, we saw one item about one person. Uh, any questions you have, have about these properties, values, um, before we continue, let's take a few questions. Yes, and uh, can someone give the microphone so everybody can hear and translate the question? Do we have those yellow question over there? Yes. Cool. Uh, so my question is about like uh, in the Nazim Kimet page, uh, there was the. Uh, name in native language yes. and it was like Nazım Hikmet Ran and yeah. Turkish in parentheses. Yes. So like if I were to search uh, like names in native languages that end with N that wouldn't come up because uh, it's a closed parentheses instead of an N in that. And is that a problem? Like as you said uh, mm, because No, no, no. No, it's uh, the name is the end of the string, and then the language is an extra piece of data. It's a different field. Okay. So if you were to search for names ending in an, you would find it. But the, when you said, like, uh, his name is not John Smith, British judge, his right. name is John Smith, so yes. that was a, uh, like, health measure. Yes. I mean, on Wikipedia, mm -hmm. Wikipedia doesn't give numbers to pages. So the name of the page is the identifier, which means you can only have one page called John Smith. So in Wikipedia, we, which was invented before Wikidata, we had to come up with some solution. And the solution we came up with was let's add disambiguation. And that's why Wikipedia has John Smith footballer, John Smith Australian footballer, uh, you know, etc. Uh, but on Wikidata, all of these different people will be called John Smith. And they would have an occupation property that says football player, for example, or judge. And they would have country of citizenship that says the United Kingdom. Right? I mean, these, these, this information will be expressed inside the item in properties and values, not at the title. The name will just be John Smith. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Other questions? Any other questions about what we've seen? Yeah. Yeah, you know, questions make me feel good because they mean you were listening and now have thoughts. So, just, uh, yes. Just, uh, just very, well, not, not a question, but actually a request. If you can, uh, sorry. Yeah. Just a, a little request. Uh, if you can show how you can type in the name in native language. Yes. So to show yes, how I'm, I'm going to show the next, the very okay, next perfect. thing. This is called an excellent question, because an excellent question is something that the speaker has a slide for, right? Thank you. <laughs> so this is an excellent question because this is the very next thing we're going to contribute to Wikidata. But before we do, any questions about what we've already covered? Any other questions? Okay. So. 
Um, by the way, Wikidata is a very friendly and welcoming place. I dare say more than some Wikipedias. Uh, I hope Turkish Wikipedia is also a welcoming place, but I know English Wikipedia can sometimes be not so welcoming. But Wikidata is a very friendly community, and it likes new people asking questions, wanting to learn. So you can go to Wikidata itself. There's a, play, a p page on Wikidata called Project Chat. And that's like the, the place to hang out and to meet people and to ask questions and to ask for help or to say what you're trying to do and then people can point you to some useful tools, etc. So if you are new, I recommend that you show up, say what you're interested in, and people will help you out. Okay. So moving on. <clears throat> Let's teach Wikidata something new something it doesn't know about. So when I was listening to the uh, founding rector's uh, speech, I thought, oh, maybe we'll create a Wikidata item about him. But there already is a Wikidata item about him, and Wikipedia articles, etc. So um, we're going to do something else. But anyway, we're going to learn how we add new things to Wikidata. So the first thing we want to do is to make sure that they really are new. So, with uh, the help of my psychic powers, I have chosen a person to look for, Durdujan Nevruz, right? And you can see that there are no results. By the way, my psychic powers are actually Bashak. <laughs> But I like to think of it as my psychic powers. Anyway, um, yeah, so the first thing we do is we search. We make sure no one else has already created this on Wikidata. By the way, even if there were results, I would still need to make sure it's not this Durdujan Nevruz, right? Yes. Yes. Durdujan Nevruz is my neighbor's son, and he's an Olympic champion. Uh, he's Down syndrome. And I would like to have him in the Wikidata. I think he's notable enough to be in Wikidata, so we will edit now. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he's a world champion swimmer in the Special Olympics, uh, in this case with Down syndrome. Yeah, so notable, world champion. I mean, how many people here in the room are world champions, right? Uh, this person is. So uh, definitely notable. And not yet on Wikipedia, not yet on Wikidata. So right now, we're going to teach Wikidata uh, something about this person. We searched, we didn't find it. Again, even if we had found that name, we still would have needed to make sure it's not maybe some, I don't know, uh, um, uh, pop musician or something with the same name. I mean, we need to make sure that the one we want to describe doesn't exist. Yes? Why are they notable? That's a good question. So, Wikidata, like Wikipedia, doesn't describe absolutely everything in the world. Uh, Wikipedia, for example, doesn't have articles about most of you. Maybe about some of you it has. But about most of you, probably there are no articles because you are not notable yet. Right, You haven't done something that makes you encyclopedic material. So there is a notability standard or criterion on Wikipedia so that it doesn't document absolutely every person on earth, absolutely every stone and every uh, sidewalk on earth. Right, Things need to have some, some general interest, some uh, importance to be documented on Wikipedia. Wikidata also has a notability criterion, but it is different from Wikipedia's. <coughs> Wikidata wants to describe everything and everyone that can be meaningfully described with reliable sources. 
So on Wikipedia, for example, people might tell you, well, not every musician deserves a Wikipedia article. Only if they, I don't know, whatever. Different Wikipedias have different standards for musicians. Only if they have uh, three albums or more. Or only if they won some music award or something. On Wikidata, if you can show reliable information about this musician, even if they have only one album, you can document them on Wikidata. So Wikidata is interested in documenting everything that is documentable with reliable sources. And that still leaves most of us out. Because most of us can't really show reliable sources about our lives other than, you know, the family photo album, our birth certificate, uh, things like that. But there, there's nothing, you know, we, nobody wrote about us in the newspaper or something like that. So that still leaves most people not notable. But if you do have newspaper coverage, for example, or a TV appearance that, you know, is relevant to something you've done, you could be notable for Wikidata, even if you're not notable for Wikipedia. So that's one re uh, criterion for Wikidata. Uh, the other criterion for Wikidata is anything that is already covered on Wikipedia. So if some Wikipedia in some language wrote about you, you're automatically notable for Wikidata. And thirdly, Wikidata also accepts items about people or things that are structurally needed structurally needed. And what might that mean? For example, imagine a case where there is a person who is notable, has a son. The son is not notable. But that son has a daughter, and the daughter, the granddaughter of the original person, is notable. So we have a grandfather and a granddaughter, both of them famous, notable, and they are connected to each other through this non-notable person. The son of the grandfather, the father of the granddaughter. Right? In this case, Wikidata will allow you to create an item describing that father, even if there's very little to say about him, because he's not notable. But we can at least say, he is the child of, that's a property, child of that famous grandfather. The grandfather can have property, uh, uh, sorry, the, the grandfather will have property child pointing to this father. The father would have property father pointing to his famous father. And he would have the property child pointing to the item about his famous daughter. Do you see what I'm saying? Because we don't have a, a, a direct link between grandfather and granddaughter. So this is what's called a structurally necessary item. Even though the father is not perhaps notable himself, he is linking for us two notable items. We need that chain in the, uh, that, sorry, that link in the chain to connect the grandfather and the granddaughter. Okay? <clears throat> Or maybe, for example, someone was born in some temporary military camp somewhere. And he happened to be born in that temporary military camp. The camp no longer exists. It's not itself very notable. It's just a place where the military camped for a few months. But that's the place of birth for this notable person. You know, the person grew up and became, I don't know, a Nobel Prize winner. And we want to be able to express somehow the place where he was born. We might create an item for that temporary camp, and we will describe it as a temporary thing by the, whatever, Turkish army or something, only to be able to say, and this famous person was born in this item, right? To link to that item. So that's another example of a, t a structural need to create items. Of course, most of the items on Wikidata are notable. Most of them are not these structural needs. But just to complete the explanation about notability to Mohsen's question, these are the cases where we would create a Wikidata item. So, as you understand, there are many, many more items on Wikidata than there are on any Wikipedia. In fact, just this week, literally this week, we celebrated how many items on Wikidata? 100 million 
100 million items, which means, remember, an item is a topic, a person, a book, a mountain. So we, we have data about 100 million things, people, books, etc. That the amount of data we have about them is billions. Because remember, this, think about how much data we had just about this one person, Hikmet. Right? So some things have, you know, 20, 40, 100 properties, uh, and some things have only three or four. Anyway, okay, so that was to that question, and we have the excellent question about new data. Yes? Hello? Yes. Uh, in, in my, well, I did the same search uh, you, as you did. But in my like uh, interface, the you may create new item blah 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 doesn't show up. Ah, excellent um, question. Why? So you have a slide for that? <laughs> yeah. I do. It's the current slide. So uh, you can see that I am logged in. Maybe you are not logged in. No, I logged in. I have. You are logged in. Yes. Oh, that's weird. It should definitely show you create new item. Um, Yeah, and Sorry? you're not you're not a new account, right? So no, no, I'm not a new account. Yeah, I don't know. Let's let's look at that during the break, though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's Thank you. Let's look Sorry. at that during the break. Okay. So we we did a search. We didn't find the item, and we're ready to teach Wikidata about this person. So you can see that after saying no results, you can create a new item. Wikidata is inviting us to teach Wikidata about this. By the way, even without this link, Butterbeck. Even without this link, you can always click create new item here on the sidebar. Okay? You don't have to search and not find. You can always just start here. In the sidebar, there's a create new item link. So let's click that. And we have this screen that invites us to create a new item. And all we need to create a new item is to give at least a label in the language. By the way, I'm on English now because I'm using uh, Wikipedia in English. Ooh, I forgot to show you how multilingual Wikidata is. Hang on, we need to show that. So I can look at this page and change my preferences. Preferences here at the top. I can change my preferences to Turkish. Uh, oh, thank you. Maybe I'll use this for now. Change my change my preferences to Turkish. There we go, and save. And then I will depend on your kindness because suddenly it's all in Turkish. Um, it's all in Turkish, and um, I need to yeah go back to the article and reload it. And now you can see that it's showing me the description in Turkish. So in case you haven't done this yet, make sure you switch Wikidata to speak your language. There's no reason for you to work in English. right? So now you can see I'm getting the Turkish description of Nazim Hikmet. And all the properties and values are now in Turkish. The statements, right? So, insan means human, apparently. Right? And görsel means a picture. So, I can learn Turkish this way. Uh, oh, there we go. Kainak, that word I remembered for source. Right? So... Uh, you can browse everything in Turkish and you can see that Wikidata knows how to say all these property names, etc. in Turkish. Great. So now that we know this, we are going to change back to English so I can find myself and proceed to create a new item. <clears throat> so, create new item. And again, I don't have to give it an uh, English label. I can actually start with a Turkish label. By the way, even though I am working in the English interface, I can still f put in a value in Turkish. 
Wikidata doesn't prevent me. So I select Turkish and I paste the name of this person. Is it Durdujan? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah? Excellent. And I need a description in Turkish. Uh, that I don't know how to do. So one of you is going to fix it after we create it. And that's it. Okay? Just a language and a label is the bare minimum. And now I can create this item. And now something interesting has happened. <clears throat> you can see here, it says no label defined. Why? Because I am using English and I only gave it a label in Turkish. You can see here, there is a label in Turkish. Right? But there's no label in English. Now in this case, the label in English would actually be the same, so that's not difficult. I'm just going to click edit here and paste the English label and save. Okay, and now I have a label here. Now the important thing is I also have a queue number. This person now has a queue number, named after Camarniso. Uh, it has a queue number, and from now on, every time we want to mention this person, we will use this number. We don't have to remember it by heart. Wikidata will always help us find this number. Now, he is, uh, this person, uh, it's a he, right? Not a she? He. I yeah. Saw. So, this person is a Paralympic swimmer. In English, I know how to say that. Okay. Um, ah, someone has beat me to it. Nice. Okay. We're going to refresh. Hello. We're going to refresh. There we go. Yes, someone has beat me to it and in fact put a Turkish description in the English field. So let's fix that. And put, yeah, <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now we have a Turkish description and an English description uh, for this person. Great. And I again, have a question. I, I could, I could have, okay. yes. So, because this happened, yeah. what if there were four people creating this item in yeah. their own languages? How will that be merged? So, that, that's a good question. So, theoretically, while I was doing this, somewhere in deepest Punjab, Manav might have been creating the same article about the same Paralympic swimmer that she happened to hear about at the same time. It could happen. And she, I would save my Turkish or English item. She would save her Punjabi uh, uh, item that I can't even read. And, uh, you know, we would have two items about the same person. Uh, that can and does happen. Eventually, someone notices, and then we can merge the items. So there is a merge function on Wikidata that effortlessly just mashes these items together so that, uh, for example, my item could get the Punjabi labels that Manav added. Okay, so it does happen. There is a way to deal with it. So don't worry about it too much. I mean, you should, you should try to make sure nobody wrote about it. But you remember, I searched in Latin script, you know, uh, Turkish or English or Latin script. And, and unless Manav, when she created the Punjabi label, also added an English label, uh, it wouldn't be trivial to find. So it could happen. Anyway, so we have a new item. We have descriptions for it, just in case there's some other person with this name. We want people to realize, no, no, this is about the swimmer not some other uh, Durdujan. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Yes, yes. Uh, so sometimes, like uh, some, let's say, in Russian Wikipedia, there's a category, and in English Wikipedia, there's, uh, it's the same category, but uh, the Russian one links to, let's say, uh, some languages within Russia, but the English one uh, has uh, interwiki links to, let's say, Arabic, Azerbaijani, etc., yeah. etc. Et They're the same categories. So what to do, I, what, what I do is that I delete every single, uh, you know, links in the... Uh, Wikipedia part there, and don't delete the, the one I you know remove the things. So how to how do we delete uh, the items? 
so items can be deleted by administrators on Wikidata, just like on Wikipedia. And there is a page, if you are not an administrator, there is a page where you can request deletion. Yes, Luca, you had a comment? Oh yes, we have a, an administrator here, at least one. I think you're also an administrator. Hakan here is a Turkish Wikidata administrator. So uh, we have administrators in the room in case of emergency, you know. Uh, so, um, yes, yes. Uh, so right now this page doesn't have any citations or anything and there's no way to distinguish uh, it from like a maybe vandalized page and how does Wikidata do that? Yeah, right now it's a new page. Uh, like I said, Wikidata has nice people so they don't immediately rush to say, oh, there are no citations on this page for like 40 seconds already, let's delete this. Uh, people understand that people are building things and it may take a while. Maybe they even understand I'm demonstrating something here. So I'm hoping it won't get deleted just uh, quite so fast. In general, Wikidata is quite tolerant of stubs like these. But you're right that this is not enough yet. Because anyone could just, you know, Write, create a Wikidata item about themselves, their neighbor, their dog, uh, you know, with no citations and no nothing. We have no way of knowing this is genuinely notable. Um, and of course, people, uh, even in Turkey, not everybody has heard about this person. Uh, certainly, if I'm a Wikidata editor, I don't know, sitting in, in Serbia, I have no, no easy way to verify whether this person uh, exists, whether they're really notable or not. So this is not enough, but we're not done. So this is an excellent question because it leads us forward. What else can we add now that we ha know what to call this person? And by the way, those of you who speak other languages can add, can add uh, uh, you know, the label in other languages. And some of you have already done that. That's great. Uh, we can reload and see. There we go. We have Azeri, Persian, Kazakh, and Russian. Excellent. Thank you. Isn't this great? You start something very superficial, very simple, and then other people make it better. That's the magic of Wiki. So, what else can we do? Hey, I wanted to do that. <laughs> no, no, now I understand. You were distracting me with questions <laughs> while someone was adding claims. I thought we would add one after the other. All right, you're you're too. I can delete all of them. No, 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 no. You're you're just uh, you're just too quick. Okay, so so this is what we would have done anyway, right? You add things. What can we say about this person? First of all, that he's a person. That he's not a book or a mountain. Person instance of human is the slightly odd Wikidata way to say this is a person. So we say that. Uh, sex or gender, male. Okay. Country of citizenship, Turkey. Languages spoken, written, or signed, Turkish. Uh, he may speak other languages, but certainly speaks Turkish. Okay. Sport, swimming. Excellent. And this statement should be a subclass of sport. And why isn't swimming a subclass of sport? Let's see. Maybe it's the wrong swimming. Ah, see? Look at this. So this is a good example of the complexity of Wikidata. Remember we said there's more than one thing called London? There's also more than one thing called swimming, and Wikidata sometimes makes very, very specific distinctions. For example, it distinguishes between swimming the water-based sport versus swimming the self-propulsion of a person through water or liquid. Because actually, not any swimming is sport swimming, right? Some people are just swimming to get to the shore on the beach, right? Or to swim away from a shark. Uh, it's not a sport. So there's the, you know, physical activity of swimming, and then there's the uh, sport discipline of swimming, right? Now, most of us just, just say swimming every day. We feel it's the same thing. But it's not quite the same thing. And Wikidata makes this distinction. So I'm guessing uh, someone picked the wrong swimming uh, here. There's also, by the way, a painting called Swimming by Thomas Eakins. 
And there is a studio album by someone named Mac Miller, also called Swimming. And Wikidata knows about these things. By the way, where do these things come from that Wikidata is showing us, these lines? Descriptions, remember? That's what the descriptions are for, exactly here, for these drop-downs. Otherwise, without them, we would just see, do you mean swimming or swimming? Or swimming? (laughs) I don't know. I need this description to help me uh, pick the one I mean. I definitely don't mean the painting. I don't mean the studio album. I don't mean just just moving through water. I mean the water-based sport. That's what I mean. And now you can see the flag has gone away. Right? Now that I picked the swimming that is a sport, that's acceptable as a value of the sport property. Okay. Now, um, for this, for example, it would be nice to have a reference. Right? So... There's a question. Okay, yes. Thank you. Okay, if uh, there would be, for example, Paralympic uh, swimming in these um, options, how specific we have to pick? Like, how we will know uh, which level of specificness is better? Excellent question. Thank you. Sometimes there are multiple levels of detail or specificity. And in this case, uh, I mi- was there a Paralympic swimming there? I, m- I might have missed it. Yeah. So if there were Paralympic swimming, specifically Paralympic swimming, in this case, for this person, that's appropriate. He is a Paralympic swimmer, not just any sports swimmer. So the general guideline on Wikidata is to be as specific as possible. As specific as possible. So for example, if someone was born on a, in, in, on a little town kind of on the outskirts of Istanbul, When they're traveling abroad, they might say, I'm from Istanbul, because, you know, nobody has heard of this little town, and it's simpler to just say, I'm from Istanbul. But, on Wikidata, we should not say that this person was born in Istanbul, if they're municipally, you know, not in Istanbul. Municipally, they were actually a separate little town here in the area. We should specify the particular town, even village, in which they were born. We need to be as specific as possible. The thinking is, let's have the data be very specific, and the query, when we retrieve the data, be very uh, as general as we want it to be. Right? So for example, later we might say, who was born in Istanbul, and only get people born in the, the city limits of Istanbul. But that may not be what we want, right? Maybe we mean, you know, greater Istanbul, the whole area. Then we need to ask our question in the right way. And we will see that tomorrow when we learn queries. We can have a query that says, who was born in greater Istanbul? In Istanbul or towns belonging to Istanbul, I don't know, province, what do you have here? Districts, right? So we we can phrase our question accordingly. Um, because if we didn't record the precise data, we couldn't do it the other way around. If the data is not precise, we will never be able to get precise answers. When the data is precise and specific, we can ask specific questions, but we can also ask general questions. So that is why the guideline is to be as specific as possible. So if there is Paralympic swimming, and maybe there is, it's worth looking, we can change this from swimming to Paralympic swimming because this person only does Paralympic swimming. Yes. Uh, would it make sense to keep swimming as well as Paralympic swimming so that uh, also when you look for swimming, you, you would see that? You could do that. There's no great harm in it, and it would help uh, naive query authors. right? Query authors who may not even have thought about Paralympic swimming uh, would still find this guy thanks to leaving the swimming there as well. So you could do that. But the general guideline is to make sure you at least have the most specific value as well, even if you have a more general value too. Okay, so let's add a little more. Um, We can add the occupation of this person because we specified their sport, but we didn't say that what they did, you know, like the the occupation was uh, athlete or sportsman. So yeah, by the way, you see I, I clicked add statement and Wikidata already kind of helps me by offering some 
popular properties. There are thousands of properties on Wikidata. But it offers me a few popular ones that I haven't added yet. Uh, sometimes the suggestion won't make sense. By the way, one of the creepiest things Wikidata does is when you have added a date of birth and a place of birth to some person, it suggests date of death. And uh, <laughs> it's a little awkward if someone hasn't died yet. But, of course, Wikidata doesn't know that they haven't died. Uh, it does know that many people have both date of birth and date of death. So maybe you want to add a date of death. Uh, don't do that if the person is alive. It's unpleasant. Okay, so uh, let's add occupation. And then in occupation, we could say swimmer which is a sports person taking part in swimming competitions. Not the film, The Swimmer. That's not what we want. We also don't want the family name Schwimmer. No, that's also not what we want. We definitely want this. By the way, maybe there's even a more specific Paralympic Swimmer? Aha! There is. And there's also something called Paraswimming. So let's actually say he is a Paralympic Swimmer. And his sport, more specifically, is para-swimming. There we go. Okay. Uh, what else? So, um, Wikidata says, hey, what about date of birth? Let's add a date of birth. And the date of birth is 6 February 1992, according to my psychic powers. Uh, and... The date is mentioned in the first reference, Bashak, or the second one? Second one. So we have here a reference from, yeah, and you see the little flag. It says, well, how do you know this is the date of birth? This is the kind of thing that should come from somewhere. Show me where you got this data. What? Yes. I, you sent me two links. I was asking. Oh, I can just say, Bashak told me, yeah. Uh, I mean, for me, for me, that's a reliable source. But for Wikidata, no. So I'm going to add a reference, and I'm going to provide the URL to an item in Hurriyet. Okay? And I can also say that it was stated in, stated in, this piece of information was stated in the, the daily newspaper Hurriyet in Turkish and publish it. So now we know where it came from. It came from the, the paper Hurriyet and I have a reference URL, right? Like uh, I'm pointing to exactly where it said that. And this is a reference just for this piece of information. Just for this piece of information, right? I might need to uh, provide this reference for several things I say here about his being a swimmer, about his being a champion, uh, receiving a, an award. Uh, so, we can go on and develop this. <clears throat> um, do we have a place of birth, Bashak, for this person? Bursa. Bursa. We know this for sure. <laughs> I mean, he's your neighbor, but maybe he wasn't born there? It doesn't. It does say. It doesn't say. So we don't know this person's place of birth. Maybe Bursa. Maybe not. Uh, what? Sorry. Yeah, we could just call and ask. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what we're going to do? How about uh, award received? Right? Because he's a he's a winner. Oh, he's a winner. Let's go with winner of the uh, 2007. Special Olympics World Summer Games. Yes, that's the one. But did he win the Olympics? Or did he win a specific uh, sport in the Olympics? Right? So it's a specific sport. So it's not enough to just say, this person won the Olympics. Right? So this is an example of where the property and value wouldn't be enough here. Just like it wouldn't be enough in the item about Barack Obama to say uh, office held President of the United States. I mean, it's not incorrect, but it's also not, no longer correct, right? 
We have to qualify it. We have to add some limitations to the piece of data. So here, we have to qualify it with the specific sport that he won in, right? So we click Publish. But then we also, yeah, you see we have a warning now that says, uh, if you say that you won at something, uh, let's see, no, this is a wrong, this should be a kind of competition, shouldn't it? No, it doesn't seem like it includes the Olympics, the winner. Anyway, we can add a pro uh, um, qualifier that says sport, and the sport in which he won was para swimming. And more specifically, um, what would be the sub-property for like the 100 meter um, backstroke? Discipline? What would be the property we would use? I'm not sure. Uh, discipline? Uh, sports discipline competed in. Excellent. Yes. So, by the way, have you noticed, I didn't remember the exact name of the property, but I had a kind of guess that it involves the word discipline. I just started typing, and Wikidata helpfully gives me a bunch of relevant properties, and I was able to pick the one I know. By the way, let's say it wouldn't have given me the right option. How do I just invent the right property? How do I know how to model, how to express in data the things I want to express? That's a very real question. And the answer to that comes from Picasso. Have you heard of Picasso? Pablo. Yes, Pablo. His friends call him Pablo, but you know. <laughs> yes, so Picasso uh, maybe said that good artists imitate, but great artists steal. And I say that he maybe said it because he was a great artist and he probably stole that from someone. Uh, but we on Wikidata believe in this, and so if you uh, want to be a good data modeler, you should steal from other people's modeling. So if I'm not sure how to express this, I can just think of uh, another relevant uh, example, maybe a more famous swimmer or Paralympic swimmer, and just look that person up and see how it was modeled on that item. And then I can learn what properties to use. This is a very respectable way of editing Wikidata. Okay? Everybody does it. So uh, I'm just trying to invent here, but actually we can totally just copy from some more developed Wikidata item about a Paralympic athlete. So let's say that this was the backstroke. Back. Stroke. That's the swimming style, and I don't know how to express the 100 meters, but yeah, we can look it up. We can look it up later. I don't want to spend too much time on this. But generally, you've seen how we add a, prop, a claim, how we add a reference to a claim, um, um, and how we uh, add yeah, and how we add uh, qualifiers. Like that's basically another set of properties and values that are not about. Durdujan. They're not about the item. They're describing this value. Right? That's why they're sub-properties. It's like we start a little uh, form or f uh, of fields just to describe and qualify this bit of data here. Yes, there was a question. Actually, you almost answered it with Picasso example, but I just wondered, uh, maybe it's not a human, it's a book or film or something like that. And Is there a list of complete, perfect items that we can uh, use as a model? Another excellent question, and you even used the word model. So, yes, there is. And uh, if we want to... Um, if we want to describe a painting, for example, a famous painting, okay? Are you with me, everybody? It's a really useful question. She was asking, how do we know, is there some ideal example that I could learn from instead of a random example? An ideal example for how to describe a person, a painting, etc. And the answer is yes, there is. If you go to the item 
about painting, painting a piece of visual art- artwork, right? Among the many things we know about... Now, this is an item not about a particular painting. This is an item about painting as an art form in the abstract. If we look at what we know about it, this is just a, you know, some examples of paintings, uh, how is it done, how is it described, all kinds of things like that. But we have a property called model item. Okay? So I went to the class of items, the kind of items. You could also go to human or book or mountain. And this tells me, if you want to know about a really well-described painting on Wikidata, go to the Mona Lisa in this case. Could have been some other painting, but they chose to make the Mona Lisa the model item. So if we go there, we see that the Mona Lisa is a famous painting, blah, blah, blah. And we can see here there's going to be very detailed and rich modeling of the Mona Lisa. For example, we see that they use the property inception. Inception is a fancy English word for beginning, right? So when did he start working on the painting? We don't exactly know. So how do we model the fact that we don't exactly know how, when da Vinci started working on the Mona Lisa? We say, well, it was the 1500s. At earliest date, 1503. Latest date, 1506. So you see, we don't have a value to put here, but we are still able to model our uncertainty at a better level than just saying, well, we don't know. We don't have a single number to put here. We are actually able to model it quite carefully and say, we don't know exactly, but it's between 1503 and 1506. And that's how you model from this model item. Um, we can see, for example, how to describe the movement of the painting, like how to attach it to an artistic movement, how to say where it is, in what museum, who owns it. We can see, for example, that between 1519 and 1547, uh, King Francis I of France owned this painting. But now, it's owned by the French state. Right? It's in the Louvre. It's owned by the French state. But again, we have two values. One of them is the current preferred value, but another one was true during this period of time, for example. If we, yeah, so this is how you find a model with the best kind of ways of describing a painting. You can see there's a lot of detail here. Uh, I want to show you one more example of limitations, and we are kind of running out of time. So I just want to show you the, artic- the item about Istanbul. You can see that, for example, um, oh, what country is Istanbul? Well, it depends on when, right? Look at this, all of this. I mean, it's certainly Turkey, starting 1923. But before then, it was technically the Ottoman Empire, right, since 1453, and Mehmed II. But until then, it was the Byzantine Empire, right? We all know that, right? Um, And before that, it was technically the Latin Empire for a few years, and then the Byzantine Empire, and then, of course, earlier, the Eastern uh, Roman Empire. So we have this detail. We can also see, uh, where was the population? Here we go. Population. What is the population of Istanbul? Again, depends on when you're asking. And Wikidata actually knows this. You see? It has multiple values for the population of Istanbul so that I could ask Wikidata to show me a graph of the population of Istanbul over the years. And I could compare it to other cities that have historical population data. Now, Istanbul is a major city. Someone put in this data. Maybe if you come from a small place, maybe nobody bothered to put in the population data for your town or village. But you can, 
right? Look it up, find the historical data, and teach Wikidata what the historical population of your uh, place has been. So we have all of that information going back uh, a long time. Okay, so we taught Wikidata something new, and of course we only touched... Yes, there was a question there? Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you for choosing the university, Skudar University, to show Wikidata uh, by our university. Uh, the question is, that's we uh, interesting for Wikidata, and we are important about uh, history in Wikidata. How much from 10 you give that the information in Wikidata is correct from 10? Can you give me a number, like 7? On eight. a scale to 10? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Wikidata, like Wikipedia, is, I would say, with all responsibility, unreliable until proven otherwise. Okay? Unreliable unless... I have reason to think it is reliable. Why do I have reason to think it is reliable? Because I see references. I see, for example, that the population number comes from the official census of the Ottoman Empire or later, you know, of Turkey. Then I do trust it. But if it's just some piece of data with no references, etc., it's not necessarily reliable. Now, that was kind of the uh, minimalist answer. Don't trust it unless you have evidence reason to trust it. Uh, However, on average, Wikidata does give you the factual correct answers, just like Wikipedia does. Most of the time, the information in Wikipedia is actually high quality. But if you want me to commit to Wikipedia always being correct on everything, absolutely not. Right? Don't so rely on it. Check the references. So there is no number. <sighs> I cannot give you a number because, because Wikidata has a hundred million items. Now the item about Istanbul, mm -hmm. I would say it's probably an eight or nine, okay? Because it's a major topic, a lot of people have gone through it, it has references. The item we just created about this uh, uh, Paralympic swimmer, maybe a two or three. Because for all we know it's correct, but it, we haven't shown that it's correct yet. We haven't put in enough data. So I cannot give you a number that would be truly representative of all of Wikidata. I can give you a rule. The more central a topic is, and the more edits you see on Wikidata, there's a history button that will show you how many edits there have been, the more likely it is to be reliable. Right? Quality or reliability on Wikipedia and on Wikidata is a process, and it approaches an optimum, it approaches perfect correction, the more people edit and the more people view it. Well, Mr. That's Thank the best you. answer I can give you about quality. Thank you about your answer. Sure. We are happy to. Okay. We have run out of time, in fact, and there were many things I wanted to show you uh, that we won't have time for right now. Maybe we can work them in to tomorrow. Um, I'm going to share the slides on the conference channel. Are you all on the Telegram channel? Group. I'm sorry, group. Te Telegram group, yes. Uh, if you're not, talk to one of the organizers and get on the channel, or um, maybe there's some other way, maybe there's a way to pass it to the university. But I'm going to share these slides, and they have links. You can click on those links and discover some of these things for yourself. I uh, wanted to demonstrate some ways you can contribute to Wikidata from your mobile, for example, using something called the Wikidata game, which basically asks you to make micro decisions like, is this a person or not? Um, and you can just say yes or no, and it helps Wikidata put in instance of human, for example. Um, but you can discover this for yourself, and I won't have time to show this. So, uh, just at the end, uh, for those of you who are technical people, Wikidata has an API, a programmable API, so you can build software, things, based on Wikidata. It's completely free to use, and it's very well documented. So just go to that page, and you will see how to use it in any programming language you like. And uh, these are some examples of amazing things built on top of Wikidata. I'll give you just one quick example before we go to uh, lunch. I'll show you uh, Krotos. Krotos is a piece of software that runs entirely... Uh, oh, yeah, it's not on HTTPS. 
It runs entirely on Wikidata. Everything you see here came from Wikidata. And what it is, is an art search engine. Okay, an art search engine, specifically art. So you can search for things by timeline. I don't know if you can see this, but there's, there are years here, see? You can limit, like you can say, I, am all, I only want things from 1400 or later, and only uh, up to, I don't know, 1600, right? And now uh, that would... Um, that would uh, um, limit the results. And I can also say, yeah, so you see now I only see uh, pictures from the 15th, 16th century. And I can also say things like, you know what, I only want drawing, I only want sculpture, not pictures. And then I would get only sculptures. And you can see it looks nothing like Wikidata, right? It looks completely different. It's a different piece of software. It feels like an art search engine, which is what it is. But it is 100% relying on data from Wikidata. Just to give you an idea of how you can build something that doesn't look anything like Wikidata, but completely relies on Wikidata to get the information. And it has links here, of course, to the picture on commons, to the Wikidata, to further information, etc. And each, each bullet on this slide shows you something amazing you can do with Wikidata. So I encourage you to explore it. But we are out of time for today. So um, skipping this as well. And I just want you, now that you have the power to edit Wikidata, you know that with great power comes great responsibility. So use it for good and not for evil. And I'm still around throughout this conference. We have breaks, we have lunch, we can go on talking. Thank you for your attention.